If you want to get something better at this price range, you're probably building it yourself. Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help folks find high-value, hi-fi, home theater, headphone equipment, and today, we're talking about the Polk R200. Polk has put out three, count them, one, two, three, new speaker lines this year. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Polk R200. Today's sponsor is Sith Audio Wood Glue for audiophiles. Don't be a dingbat and use tight bond one, two, or three. When you're building your DIY speakers, you need to make sure that you have an audiophile grade wood glue. That's why Sith Audio has come out with audiophile wood glue. They call it the Python, because once it gets a hold of something, it doesn't let go. It squeezes the life out of it. Sith Audio audiophile wood glue. Available on the website for $972.17 on sale, 0.5% off for the holidays. Sith Audio, audiophile, wood glue. Polk! All right, Polk. Polk has come out with, earlier this year, the R series. The Reserve series takes a whole bunch of technology from the Legend series. That was released... I almost two years ago, I think, at either last year or the year before, but they were expensive. And that was a Polk that I was excited about when it was released, but obviously because of the price, it was just a non-starter for me. When I learned about the Reserve Series and Polk asked me to actually review the R100 initially, I was thrilled. I always wanted to hear the R200. So I reached out to Polk and they said, yeah, we'll send one out to you. And these are currently on sale. So when this video goes up, this is, I think, one of the last days to get this still on sale. $650 right now, as opposed to the regular, I think, $700. Actually, this might be $630. $700 is the retail price. And even at $700, I think this is a compelling speaker to consider. At $630 or $650, it's a very compelling speaker to consider. Comes with the very nice grills that they stick on just like that by magic magnets actually magnets aren't magic it's science they have a curved front baffle they come in two colors either this color up here like the r100 or the r200 speaking of knocking on a speaker i don't want to knock them over they're pretty well braced actually they're pretty heavy too on the back there is a pair of binding posts no buy amp or buy wire for these boys, but that doesn't matter because I've really only done that once. If you want to buy amp or buy wire them, I guess you'll have to break into the back and rewire the crossover. Not impossible. One can do it if they really want to. The R200 comes with a six and a half inch woofer. Oh yeah. A one inch ring tweeter. A little bit different technology. A little spike out of the front just in case the speaker gets mad. I'll use the same joke I used on the R100. Remember when Indiana Jones was running through at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark and, and he's stepping on the things and the little spears are flying across him. It, he doesn't matter because he's just making it through there. That's what this looks like. Exactly like a spear tip. It makes it sound better. I don't know if it does or not. It does sound pretty good. So I just looked it up. These are 630 right now. Today, 630 regularly priced at 750 and they also come in white if one wants to get white they're rated at eight ohms okay pretty easy not a hard load to drive but their sensitivity is 86 db which is a bit lower one doesn't need a super high current amplifier to run these when it hurts i always recommend the more current you can have the better but with an eight ohm load most most things are going to drive this just fine unless it's maybe a tube amp so any AV receiver or two-channel amp that is, well, Class D is going to drive them. I like the AB. AB, Class A, maybe. AB, it's going to drive them just fine. You may have to crank the volume up a little bit because of the lower sensitivity. These are rated down to 51 hertz up to 38,000 hertz. Now, let's talk about speaker ratings if you look at a speaker and it pulls up and it says okay frequency response is 30 up to 30,000 a rating of 51 is not super compelling one doesn't look in there oh wow 51 that's awesome especially with a speaker of this size however i will tell you that 
in my experience, and I've listened to a fair number of speakers at this point, in my experience, the frequency ratings don't necessarily tell the whole story. And I have listened to speakers that are rated below 51 that don't have anywhere near the base or the base extension as a Polk R200. So if you were looking at the specs and you, ah, 51, that's not low enough. Don't worry about it. It's plenty to the point where this speaker isn't meant for all applications because of the amount of bass. Now to give some context, the R100 is rated at 58. So the bass rating goes from 58 Hertz down to 51 Hertz. And I didn't have any issues with the bass on the R100, even at 58 Hertz. Point being, don't let those ratings scare you off. So they're using some different technologies. They call it the Turbin Cone Mid-Range Bass Driver. And I, I went over it in the R100 video. So if you wanna check out the R100 video, I'll link it, you can check that out. And it goes over a little bit more of the technology. The takeaway here is that they brought down technology from the Legend series, which is a much more expensive speaker. It also has the redesigned port on the back. Overall build quality is pretty good. I wish the black was a little bit different because it's a vinyl wrap. I'd Listen, I don't mind it at all. I do like the wood color here. I just think it's a little bit nicer looking. I haven't had the, the white speakers in, but so far black, brown. I prefer the brown over the black, but there's no issue. I really do like the grills too. I think the grills are awesome. I like the heather gray, big fan of it. The R200 is quite a bit deeper. So we're looking about three inches or more deeper and a bit taller as well, about an inch taller and about an inch wider. So the big difference here in measurements is front to back. The R200 is quite a bit deeper than the R100. For electronics on the front end of this, I tried both the Gashelli Labs J2 DAC as well as the Denifreps Ares 2. Running into the Akatika PR, it's a preamp. It's a kit, but you can also get it finished. Uh, I don't know, it's the 102. It's the only preamp they make. Going into the power amp, which is the four ohm version of the power amp. That four ohm version is only rated at 35 watts at eight ohms. Even at 35 watts into eight ohms, it didn't have any issue driving these. And with the way that the impedance goes down, it's not always an eight ohm load. It's dropping below eight ohms a lot. So with that amp 35 and eight, it actually goes up to 50 watts, like at four. What I'm saying is you don't need a ton of power to drive these to their fullest capabilities. And when I put these on the Emotiva XPA Gen 3 two channel amplifier, which is a monster, I didn't really hear any different. The differences I did hear, I would attribute it to the amplifier and not the power. I think if you have 35 watts of decent power, you're gonna be able to drive these just fine. Soundstage and imaging, just like the R100, these soundstage and image, great. I have absolutely no issue with it. You wouldn't think it by looking at the waveguide here because it's not huge, it's not a huge horn or anything, but these do a very good job of soundstage and imaging. Fleetwood Mac, the chain, dead center. Chocolate chip trip by Tool, went seamlessly right to left, left to right. Wherever I May Roam by Metallica, 13 second point, all the way right. Good job. There is no issue with soundstage and imaging. This does give a bit of a vertical soundstage because of the tweeter design. Hello by Adele, she was a bit above the speakers. If you can get some space from the back wall with these, it will give a very nice soundstage behind the speakers. Now, in a small room, and we'll get to this in the final thoughts, but in a small room, you may want to consider something else if you don't have a lot of real estate behind the speaker. Overall soundstage and imaging is excellent. Let's talk about bass. Bass on the R200 is fairly neutral. I feel like there's a bit of a bump or rise, but it's not a mm, in your face rise, very well extended. One minute mark of Narcissistic Cannibal by corn doo -doo, goes down there. Now this speaker does not do as well as I have heard, but also the, some of those speakers are rated at 40 Hertz anechoic or even 38 Hertz. At 51 Hertz, this is going to sound like a speaker that is rated much lower. 
the specs don't tell the whole story because the specs don't tell you how much you're getting. This speaker walks the perfect line between extension and punch. The bass line in the Seven Dust song, Denial, was very good. It was separated out, it was thick, it was leathery, but also clear. From a bass clarity perspective, I think this is only beaten by either kit speakers or maybe the ELAC debut reference from a texture, tone, and clarity perspective. This sounds better than aluminum dome, maybe not as quite as good as a paper cone. Again, the bass tone and texture is excellent. I wrote in my notes that it hits like a leathery hammer. I don't know if that makes any sense. I like it though, leathery hammer. That's what these hit like. Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range on the R200s is excellent. Redemption song by Bob Marley. Had a tendency to lean a bit warm, but still had clarity, still had soul, still had mmm. It was very good. Not bailed at all, which is sometimes an issue with warmer speakers. This speaker is pretty neutral, but leans a bit warm, and I like that. Hello by Adele. There was enough clarity in her voice, but again, enough soul, enough body that it really did it well, rendered it very well. Not quite as haunting as some of the more warmer speakers that I've had. Again, right in the middle. You have body, you have detail. It's lean, slightly warm. Mm, it's a nice, nice speaker. Shoot to Thrill by ACDC came in crunchy, but also had a lot of body. No complaints about the mid-range. I don't feel like it's recessed. I don't feel like it's brought down a bit. Maybe a slight dip in the mid-range, but that's fine because I don't like things fatiguing. This will have a tendency to get a bit much if you have these tweeters aimed right at you, right at ear level, and you're close to them. In a regular room though, I'm not worrying about fatigue with these. Let's talk about treble. Treble, Nina Simone, Sinner Man, 16th notes at the beginning, felt very good, they felt believable, they felt crisp, they felt clear, but also had body, did not feel fake. Africa, the Weezer version by Toto, very good song for cymbal decay, cymbals just hung in the air. Harvester of Sorrow by Metallica, that whole song has a ton of cymbals, and it's recorded a bit hot, so something, if you have a very hot speaker it's not going to sound very good on that song this did it very well there was activity there was clarity but there was also decent decay overall this speaker does a very good job with treble it may not be as completely natural as some speakers i.e the wharfdale 4.1 there's a lot of excitement and a lot to like on this speaker this feels like a combination and i've said it before in the r100 video between a soft dome, very well done soft dome, and even an AMT tweeter or a ribbon tweeter. It has characteristics of both. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts on this speaker is at $630, this is right up there. It is a contender, because we're talking about the ELAC debut reference. We're talking about the ELAC Unify 2.0s. At that price category, this is playing. We're also talking about the Wharfdale Evo 4.1s. In this price category, this is playing. You have great bass presence, very detailed, warm-ish sounding mid-range, a lot of activity in the treble, very good clarity, may lean just a little bit brief, but overall a fantastic representation of the entirety of the frequency response. Bass can be a bit much with these speakers in a smaller room and closer to a wall. I would recommend these be in a medium to even large room because they can build up a lot of energy in that bass region, which doesn't make sense because it's 51. That's why I'm saying don't always believe the specifications. 51 is plenty. This thing slams, but is well behaved on the bass end. But it'll get you if the song calls for it. At 6.30, wonderful speaker. Even at 7.50, I think this is a speaker to consider. At 6.30, this is going to give people almost everything that they want. 
gives you a bit of warmth, gives you great clarity, gives the a, a realistic tonality, not cool, leans a bit warm. If you want the complete, utter neutral frequency response, probably the ELAC Unify 2.0 or the Wharfdale 4.1 or 4.2, but the 4.1 is not big as this. It's not gonna give you as much bass punch as this one. All in all, this is probably the safest bet in that price category. It's very well done. And Polk is doing an extremely good job this year of really bringing three different tiers of affordable speakers. $630 is expensive, but it's not just ELAC anymore. It's not just Klipsch anymore. Polk is back of the game. I think one's getting better bass clarity out of this than the ELAC Unify 2.0. I think the ELAC may do a better job of soundstage and imaging, maybe a bit bigger immersive experience, but the Polk is not embarrassed. This thing goes toe to toe with everything else in the price range and quite frankly beats a lot of the other speakers. Ultimately, it's up to you what specific area you want that speaker to do exceptionally well. I think if we're talking what does this speaker do exceptionally well, I think bass, I think bigness, largeness of the sound, and clarity. I can't really find much fault with this speaker. If you want to get something better at this price range, you're probably building it yourself. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon-only Zooms. We also have a patron-only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. Right now, you can get six months of Disney Plus for free or three months of Amazon Music full free. If you sign up and cancel, it doesn't matter. I get a couple of dollars. You can also use the affiliate links for this speaker. Again, this speaker is on sale today, and I think it's going off sale tomorrow. So if you're looking to buy it, I pull the trigger. $630 is an excellent price for this speaker. Don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through your new Polk R200s and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Body Man.